Imagine you have two objects that are careening, careening towards each other. They will collide into each other and bounce off in this particular scenario. So they're going to collide at, let's say, this point right here. So they will hit the box is supposed to be the same size. They will move and separate. So at some point, they're going to split apart. And then A will shoot off back, and B will shoot this way. You need the visual. Uh, it works for, for magnets too. It just, really? Those just stay together. It depends on how you have them oriented. Right, but you have it right. Well, this also works if they stick together as well. But just for this scenario. No magnets. The magnets are either opposed to each other so that they will not stick together or there are no magnets. Yes, Laura. In your drawing. <clears throat> The A, B above the second one, that one. Okay, what's the difference between that one and the one directly below? This is when they first meet, and this is when they just about to break apart. But they're different sizes, though. So they're just. They're supposed to be the same stick. size. I can't draw. So they're just. So they're just. They're just the same. We're saying we're just looking at them at different positions. Yes. yes. Yes, they're okay. touching here, they're, they're touching, and they're touching every time between this time and this time. Okay. So here's the question. While they are in contact with each other, there are three things that are the same for both A and B, three quantities that are the same for A and B. What are those three quantities? While they're touching? While they're touching. There's four. Pardon? Force. Be more specific. Or more force. Or acceleration. All right. We suddenly went off of the hold off on acceleration for the moment. Um, this is part of the discussion we had earlier. The magnitude of the force. There we go. Magnitude. Because the forces can't be the same because they're pushing on each other in opposite directions. So magnitude of force is the same. I'm going to write that in shorthand notation. The force on A from B, so the first letter is the receiver, the second one is the source. So the force on A from B is equal to the negative force of B on A. The magnitudes are the same, the directions are opposite, that's the minus sign there. This is the shorthand version of Newton's third law. Third law of motion if you want more specifics. All right, one down. Wait, can you say the words again? Like just say. This is the force on box A caused by box B is equal to the negative of the force on box B from box A. Okay, why is it negative? Because of the opposite directions. Okay. So force on A caused by B. And yes. The first. force on A by B. What, what chapter is this? Seven. So, but this topic came up, came up in the master set four, though. Right? Well, where we're heading is different. Okay. Newton's third law definitely is chapter four, though. But um, hopefully I want to connect what we've done already with what we were about to do. Okay. All right. Again, three quantities, one down, two to go. And I will say, one of them is so incredibly obvious, it's usually the last one that people actually mention. Occasionally, someone will throw it out early. Uh, Abigail, you were suggesting what? I said acceleration. If, now I'm thinking weight. Well, first off, uh, I have only two objects in this system here. I made no mention of the planet. It's just two objects heading towards each other. Right. 
Um, and also, if, if you want to start bringing in specific type forces, forces are taken care of already. You don't need to bring up any more forces. If the magnitude of the forces is the same, the acceleration, but in opposite directions, then, well, acceleration can't be the same because they'd be in opposite directions. But the magnitude can't be the same either unless their masses are the same. And there's nothing in the game where masses are the same. So there's another force, like working against or on the? No, not no, there's another. There's two more quantities that are the same for both objects. Only when they're touching. Time. What do you mean? Because, because they both arrive at the point where they touch each other at the same time. Do they start at the same time coming towards each other? Right, irrelevant. All I care about is while they're touching. The time, the time for B and the time for A are not. The time when they first hit. I could have started the stopwatch for that one before I started the stopwatch for this one. So, the, the time when they meet is not necessarily the same for them in that sense. For a hint, is it a force or is it other physical quantities? Other physical quantities. The mass is not necessarily the same. Uh, it's at some point they turn around, but we don't know if they turn around at the same time. So their velocity, also their velocities when they first touch, they're coming towards each other. Yeah. Uh, so the velocities are not. Guaranteed to be the same at any point. What letter does it start with? <laughs> a, B. <laughs> well, one of them starts with a D. This direction. The direction they're going opposite the directions are not going to be the same. <laughs> I didn't hear the one. I was like, thinking. is it displacement? Yes. While they're touching, it's not position is not the same. Displacement is the same. So A basically moves from here to here, B moves from here to here, if I drew them the same length. Uh, the displacements are the same in this scenario. So the displacement of A equals the displacement of B. And then the other one that's really obvious that I thought someone almost had, but then veered off. I did not understand the displacement. Let me see if I can actually draw this. A and B. There's probably some way of duplicating this. So they meet at some point and they separate at a different point. A is going to move basically, when you're talking about the position of an object, without more detail, I'm looking at the center of mass. The center of mass of A moves from here to here. The center of mass from B moves from here to here. The displacement of the center of mass of both objects is the same. That's what I was going for. So that's the part that was confusing because this looks like it's just going down, they're moving at the same line all the way down. Oh, no, I tried to, the, I got the two lines. dotted lines there to try to indicate the separation. I'm sorry you do not appreciate the abstract. You just have to like, so it's, you're going to score. Like, it's like going down at the same time while they're. No, no, it, these are four moments in time. So, right. scene one, they're coming towards each other. Right. The second scene, they make first contact. Right. Next scene, they separate. They're just about to separate. And then the fourth scene, they're moving apart. It's one-dimensional motion. Oh, okay. 
Starting out, they. Sure. I had that dotted line closer to B than A, so that would be some indication that the speeds aren't even starting out the same. Is there a hole in the pocket? That's a good one. Oh, it's not a good one. Is it good pressure? Is it what? Good pressure of the two objects in the head? No, the compression is not necessarily the same if they're different. Uh, it's a, Laura almost had it, and, and I guess Laura slash Robin almost had it, but then... What was it? Time. Yeah, what about it? What's the same for them? Not necessarily. By the time that they hit each other. The time at which they hit each other is not necessarily, that's what Laura was going to do. The time they're kind of... The time they're like... They're In contact with each yeah. other. Uh, a touches B for the same amount of time that B touches A. Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. I told you it was so obvious. That most people don't think about it. Now, I, I will say that I, oftentimes I'll give my most obscure clue, one of my two most obscure clues, and the clue is it's also the name of a Bobby Sherman song. See, that one helps. That I would have got no. it immediately. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't say it. It's <laughs> All right, now, what's the purpose of the exercise? If I combine these two concepts here, I combine the fact that Newton's third law and this idea of displacement, this is when I get into the, get into the physics things of work and energy. If I combine Newton's third law with time, I get into the idea of impulse and momentum. Work and energy is chapter seven. Impulse and momentum is chapter eight. So we're going to take this stuff and sort of explore, get into this idea of why on earth is energy conserved. Well, the cynical answer is because we made it so. Some claim it's just a fundamental concept of the universe. Well, we've defined it so that it does become part of it. So let's start out with, I'm going to multiply force times displacement. That is a dot product. So I'm multiplying the parts that are parallel to each other. So if I have a box here traveling along a floor, so the box is traveling in this direction, and I apply a force downwards, what is the force times the displacement? We talked about the dot products when we were driving one of the cake formulas. Well, what is the dot product between that force and the displacement that this is going to experience? Because dot products multiply parallel components, and there's nothing parallel between force and displacement here, so the dot product would be zero. If the force is has some component in the direction of displacement, I'll get a positive dot product. If I have the force with some component opposite the direction of displacement, I'll get a negative dot product. Now, this force times displacement uh, force is mass times acceleration, not delta x. Where have we seen acceleration with a dot product with displacement? Oh, that's the cake formula. Which cake formula? That's the v, vf squared minus vi squared plus 2 acceleration at the displacement. You're close. Equals vi squared plus 2. Excess, whatever we're getting. All right, so let's solve for a dot x there. So I get vs. So bring vi over here. 
bf squared minus bi squared, divide by two, and I get a dot delta x. So my dot product becomes mass times bf squared minus bi squared over two. which is one half mass times the F squared minus one half mass times the I squared. Just distribute it. Now the one half of MV squared shows up enough that physicists just didn't want to write it anymore. So I thought, let's come up with a letter to represent that. And so they use a capital K to represent this one half MV squared. What is that? What is that? What is K? It's a letter of the alphabet. That one doesn't represent anything. It does. We'll get there. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, spoil it. We're getting there. I'm taking it. Just curious <laughs> with this class. I can't stop myself. <laughs> I'm just picturing around your birthday and your parents are happy. Trying to get for you and you just insist for months. What is it? So if that's the case, well, also do recognize that since I got F equal MA, I, I did make an assumption here that this was the total force. If F is equal to MA, this is the total force. Or net force. So my net force times my displacement is going to be equal to k final minus k initial, which is just the change in k. And with calculus, it works also. This right here, this force times displacement, this is what we call work. And why I don't use a capital W for weight. This more specifically would be the net or total work. So we have this relationship between work and this thing of K here, that the total work is equal to the change in K. K, now we'll answer a particular question, stands for kinetic energy. One formula that I do expect you to have memorized, that I expect you to know, as in, I usually do 30 years from now. Let's assume I'm still alive 30 years from now. I've run across you in the street in a nonviolent way. <laughs> <laughs> and there's that, like, you look familiar. And then we eventually figure out how I know you, how I know you. I should be able to ask you, what's the formula for kinetic energy? And you should know the answer. We would say. Say that I don't know you. you would say one half mv squared. Okay. Oh. What's the formula for kinetic energy? One, one half, half mv squared. Square. Square. Now I didn't hear, hear every voice, and so I, I am going to enforce this. I want to hear every voice. Just a little side vignette. When I was working for Accenture, we were at what they call boot camp, and we we're busily all typing on typing code into a computer, and in comes some people who wanted us to get get our circulation going again because we've been sitting so long, she said, they said, all right, everybody up. And then her voice, the tone of her voice changed and she said, I'm serious, everybody get up now. We all got up and did jump jacks. <laughs> so, I am serious. I want all of you to, when I ask what's the formula for kinetic energy, all of you are to respond, one half in V squared. Don't do one half times mass times speed squared. One half in V squared. I want to hear the chorus of angels. <laughs> What's the formula for kinetic energy? One half mv squared. <laughs> you now have to say it that way every time. You got it. <laughs> All right. That's the formula I expect. 
Why? Why that one and not the others? Because it turns out that all the formulas we've been dealing with are work really well, but you really get into these bizarre situations or these eccentric situations where they're just a little bit off. F equals ma works fine, and there's no way Newton could have figured out otherwise, but if the mass changes, how do you deal with it? Uh, that's something that we'll deal with in the next in chapter eight. But so all the equations are just a little bit off, but not that one. You're working on your Nobel Prize winning work in physics. That's the formula for kinetic energy. Giovanni, you got a question? Yeah. What, are, what about when somebody goes on G with that one now? Uh, the tricky one thing on that one is that G is. It's not really considered weight if you are far enough away from the planet, and but little g has its own calculation really to make. So that, that's why I'm not throwing that in there. For the sake of this course, if it's close enough to be weight, yes. This formula here that the total work is equal to the change in kinetic energy is known as the work energy theorem. I think it is mislabeled, but I was not consulted. Because it's not really a theorem. Work, it is true because we have to find work and we have to find kinetic energy so that it is true. Uh, theorem sounds cool. Yeah, that could be could be just advertising. So physicists love conservation laws, laws. It gets their hearts all on Twitter. So I take this book, and if I drop it, will the kinetic energy stay the same? Why not? Because it's, it has to stop at Because what? Because it has to stop at one point? Well, it stopped right now, and it stops at another point. Pardon? Yeah, well, I'm, we're slowly leading to that. It's velocity shifting. Yeah, or more specifically, speed. Notice it is not a vector. This is a scalar quantity. 